Welcome to Motown, where the hits keep on rolling. And where today the Pro Bowlers Tour takes its rock and road show. Parker Bone III will strut his stuff again. But Tommy Baker, Chris Hayden, and Doug Kent are hoping to be Motown's next hit. Detroit, Michigan for CBS coverage of the next stop on the Professional Bowlers Tour. And welcome to Taylor Lanes in Taylor, Michigan for the Greater Detroit Open. Hello everyone, I'm Gary Seibel along with PBA Hall of Famer Marshall Holman. And Marshall, what an incredible week of bowling last week in Reno. Plenty of excitement. Gary is a bowler, it does not get any better than last week. Who will forget Parker Bowen when he shot that great 300 game, becoming only the 12th man in PBA history to bowl a nationally televised 300 game. And he did it on the three pound, 10 ounce pro pins. And Mike Albee, with everything seemingly going his way, left the difficult 6-7 split in the ninth frame. But with the heart of a champion, he converted the split and marked in the 10th frame for his third American Bowling Congress Masters title. Well, Marshall, that was last week. What can we look forward to this week? Gary, four great bowlers once again, starting with our tournament leader, Doug Kent. Now, this is a powerful right-hander. He likes to throw the big hook, but he also has the ability to go hard and straight. Now, Kent just edged out Parker Bowen III to be our tournament leader. One of these three men will meet our tournament leader, and our shootout consists of Parker Bone III, Chris Hayden, and Tom Baker. And Parker Bone III, with his consistency and great natural ability, he's making his third telecast in the last four weeks. He knows it's time to win. Chris Hayden, the newcomer, he showed no fear as he bowled great in the position round to make it to the top four. And Tom Baker, well, all he did last night was shoot 254 in the final game of match play to leap all the way from seventh to fourth. Well, we are set for our shootout round in the Greater Detroit Open. Chris Hayden, Parker Bone the third, Tom Baker will battle it out. Our TV lanes today, lanes 39 and 40. 14th year the PBA has held an event in Taylor, Michigan. They've had the Greater Detroit Open here since 1992. Gary may be a little tentative in Chris's first shot, and he shouldn't be embarrassed to do that. It is difficult bowling on national television, especially your first time. And 4-7 lead for Chris Hayden, his first ball here at the Greater Detroit Open. And will convert that spare, Marshall. Marshall, we're bowling in a little bit of a different house today, and what I mean by that is a different surface of the lanes. Tell us about it. Well, Gary, we're bowling on a natural surface this week. It's 17 feet. The first 17 feet are maple, the last 43 feet are pine. It's the old traditional way of bowling. Uh, we're seeing mostly synthetic lanes in our previous telecast. This week, we're on the wood. And a delayed exactly pinfall the there, Marshall, for Parker Bowen III, who is up with his first shot on lane 40 in the first frame. Well, very unusual. He le leaves the one and the nine. The three pin was standing, and actually the one three nine, much easier to pick up than the one nine. He needs to get the ball over to the right-hand side of the one pin and have the ball drive back and get the nine. And he does exactly that. He breathed against sigh of relief himself. And now Tom Baker up in the first frame, 43-year-old from Buffalo, New York. One of two right-handers in our TV final today. Well, he makes a great shot, leaving the solid 10. He did everything that he wanted to do with that particular delivery. Everything except knocking the 10 down. 10 pin leave for Tom Baker. 22 years on the PBA tour. They call him Bakes. And we've got three spares to start out our first frame. Everybody's all even. 
so far of the first three shots, Tom Baker, the only one making the quality shot. Let's see if Chris Hayden can settle down. He really was bowling well in practice, hitting the pocket and getting quite a few strikes. And a bad looking lead for Chris Hayden. We take a look at the 4 6 10, the leads. We'll look at our Mac cam. You can see the ball just goes right through the heart, leaving the 4 6 10. And really, all he can do is throw hard and straight at the 6 10. Maybe hope to bounce something out. Not to be. It's nine out for Chris Hayden. So Chris Hayden with an open in the second frame quickly finds himself down 14 pins to Tom Baker and Parker Bowl in the third. They to take a look at the scoreboard with Parker Bowl in the third up on lane 39 in frame number two. So he leaves a solid eight pin. The ball drives through. We'll take a look with the Mac cam once again. You're right. Take a look at the way the ball does not even deflect at all, leaving the eight pin and a reaction from Parker Bone. Oh my. <laughs> Second shot, Parker picking up the eight pin. adopted this unusual style, Gary, to try and make him a little more loose and get up maybe a friendly roll the fourth pin. Tom Baker, big hockey fan, fan of the Buffalo Sabres. No surprise there, being from Buffalo, New York. We take a look at Tom Baker, watch the pin. Just does topple the four. Well, Chris Hayden starts out the third frame. Hey, Gary, it just it really, it seems as if Chris Hayden has just thrown some nervous shots in the first three frames, not been able to, to catch the rhythm that he had in the qualifying. Why so many guys leaving spares this early in the match? Well, for Tom Baker, he's made two good shots. One didn't, just one didn't carry. For Chris Hayden, he's made three, four shots, and uh, Parker Ball, had a little trouble in the first frame, came back with a quality shot in the second. Now he's up on lane 40, looking for his first strike of the match. Parker Bone, a tremendously consistent year. First in the Brentwood Classic, first tournament of 1998. Second at the Bayer Brunswick TPC in Akron, Ohio. Second in the American Boat and Congress Masters. Great year for Parker. And a great, solid shot as well on lane 40. Looked quite a bit like his last shot on 39, but this time, all the pins are going to fall over. Take a look at Parker Bone. We're very familiar with this style. Long arm swing. Watch the ball hook back to the right. And all the pins do their job. Tom Baker remaining in control. Great shot. Two strikes in a row for Tom Baker. We've got more coming your way from Detroit. We're back in Taylor, Michigan for the Greater Detroit Open in our shootout round. And right now for the Alka-Seltzer Friday Night a Recap, let's take a look with a position round determined who made today's TV finals. Doug Kent defeating Parker Bowen the third to take the top seed in the Greater Detroit Open. And here we see Dale Eagle. This shot right here, the 12th one. It's for 300 last night. Very exciting for Dale. It was really about all he did. He had a lot of trouble. And we take a look at Tom Baker. This is in his last game, making that big charge to get to our top four. And Bakes was, in fact, cooking last night, going from seventh to fourth in the position round. And that's this week's Alka-Seltzer Friday Night Recap. And there's a look at Tom Baker, who told me about three years ago he was ready to quit this game. We'll get to that a little bit later on right now. We're in frame number four with Chris Hayden, who finds him down, himself down 24 pins to Tom Baker, who's in the driver's suit. And it's time for this young man to settle down and make good shots. And there's the first one for Chris Hayden. I think that commercial did it well. Chris Hayden has had experience on television. Three TV appearances in amateur events. 
Marshall, does any one player have a decided advantage here? Well, before we got started, I would definitely have given the advantage to Parker Bohm. He's the bowler who's been on our telecast so much in recent weeks. However, Tom Baker is taking the early lead, and Chris Hayden, maybe he's getting his, getting his rhythm as we get going. So, Parker Bone III congratulating his good buddy, Josh, who is known since about five years old. Josh afflicted with cerebral palsy with his mom, Bambi, here. Dad, Roger, introduced Josh to Parker Bone eight years ago or so, and they've been best buddies since. Here's Tom Baker now on lane four. Well, catch the PBA Tour online. You'll get the latest tournament results and features, plus stats, bios, and chat live with the pros on www.pbatour.com, sponsored by Brunswick. And a terrible break for Tom Baker as he leaves a little bit of a high seven. That's going to stop. It just, hang it just hung on. Bakes is laughing. He knew he was going to make it. I wasn't really sure. Having a good time. Right now, Chris Aiden is up in the fifth frame, down 23 to both Parker Bone and Tom Baker. Can cut it to 13 with a strike here, Gary. I watched him last night, and when he gets it going, he is not afraid to keep striking. Right now, he's really looking good. Calm demeanor for uh, Chris Hayden. Just sort of sits there and goes, ho hum, I'm good. And as you said, Marshall cutting it to 13. Baker and Bone are tied. And here is Parker Bone on lane 40 in the fifth. For the strike in the fifth to take a 10 pin lead over Tom Baker. And a 23 pin over to his pin lead over Chris Hayden. So Parker Bone, the third, is heating up. There's Parker Bone on lane 40. Flush in the pocket once again. And he does take that lead. Well, coming up next week here on CBS, the PBA Tour continues. It's the Brunswick Johnny Petraglia Open. Next Saturday, we'll have a 2 o'clock start from North Brunswick, New Jersey. Don't miss the Brunswick Johnny Petraglia Open. Carolier, New Jersey, North Brunswick, that's where we'll be for the Johnny Petraglia Open. There's Tom Baker converting a spare in frame number five. And Tom has done nothing wrong the entire game. He left a solid 10 in the fifth frame, a little bit of a high seven in the fourth frame. Hasn't really had a lot of good breaks. Chris Hayden now up on lane 40. He's back in the match with that strike right there. I told you once he gets it going, not afraid. Gets the swing inside. Let's the ball float out to the left. Puts it back, and the four pin does the damage on the seven for Chris Hayden. That's three in a row, and now only 13 behind our leader, Parker Bone, the third. Marshall looked like Parker liked the way that looked, but he left himself a solid seven. Well, it was a great shot as we take another look at the pins. Watch the four pin go right around the bottom of the seven pin. It was a great shot. He knew it was great, and he knows it's just a part of the game. A lot of, a lot of solid pins for the righties and solid sevens for the lefties. No problem. He's looking. He's going, look, look, Marshall, I made it. That's right, Parker. You, you generally are a good spare shooter. I'm still shocked at last week's miss of the seven pin. He's got a little bit of a sense of humor, and he's comfortable bowling on television. And here's Tom Baker. We mentioned three years ago that he was ready to quit this game. Wasn't bowling all that well. Wasn't making the kind of money he thought he should be making. And that looked like a tremendous shot by Tom Baker. All right, we're going to be back with more from the greater Detroit Open in just a moment.
Welcome back to Taylor, Michigan, and the Greater Detroit Open. There you see our scoreboard. And even though Parker Bowen the third working on a spare, the other two strikes, he is in command here. Well, Parker Bowen the third remembers the first time he ever picked up a bowling ball as we travel down memory lane. I was eight years old, and my mom took me down to the local bowling center back at home. I threw a big ball down the lane and knocked over 10 pins at the other end. And I'll tell you what, I absolutely loved it. She's taken me back many, many more times since. Yeah, Parker Bone, as he remembers when he first started bowling, he certainly uh, has become such an accomplished player and really enjoys his bowling on television. And Marshall, we're back to the shootout round, frame number seven, which will be started by Chris Aid. And of course, uh, Parker Bone III is going to pass Walter A. Williams, Jr. in money earned this year, a little bit later uh, on today. But we're going to take a look now at Chris Aiden in frame number seven. Just trailed by two pins right now. He bowled in the American Bowling Congress Masters in Reno last week, finished sixth, winning $8,700. And the only reason, Marshall, that Chris decided to bowl this week is because he did so well at the American Bowling Congress Masters last week. <laughs> Good decision. <laughs> A no-brainer, as they say. Parker to maintain that two-pin lead. Parker. He knows it was good. And Tom Baker, the early leader, now down 10 to Parker Bowen the third, is on lane 39. Well, he's not down 10 anymore, Gary. That ties the match right there for Tom Baker. Very confident shot. Got some help from Fred Gordon. We've met him at Akron, the TPC. And that week, Tom Baker, after getting one lesson from Fred Borden, won $48,000 in the AC Delco Classic, the top prize. Chris Hayden going for the lead. A little friendly break, kissing the six pin down. Well, take a look. This ball looked like it might have been a little slow. Didn't get the good ball speed, but take a look at the second pin to your right. He knocks it down, and he, he knows he just stole one, but he'll take it. And Earl Anthony was Chris Hayden's idol. I know he liked you a lot, but Earl <laughs> Anthony was the man. Well, Chris Hayden being a lefty, I don't blame him. Earl Anthony was one of my idols also. And a 4-7 lead for Parker Bone the third. And really, the first first bad shot Parker's thrown since the first frame, we take another look at this ball. Look, it's just square on the head pin. Really fortunate not to leave a wide open split. Very makeable. 4-7 for Parker. Parker Bowen the third, baseball, golf, Ms. Pac-Man, go-kart, some of his favorite hobbies. All right, Tom Baker back on the approach on lane 40. Looking to stay close. He's eight down right now. Tom Baker is up by two pins, and this score is going back and forth. Very exciting as we see Tom Baker from a low angle. Watch the way he spins the ball down the lane. Coming back into the 1-3 pocket. All the pins doing their job, and a two-pin lead for Banks. And there we take a look at the scoreboard. Hayden and Baker working on strikes. Parker Bowen the third now finds himself down 10 working on a square. And Chris Hayden looking to take a two-pin deficit and make it an eight-pin lead. And makes a great shot. Leaving the six-pin. Gary he really put his best effort into that, but wasn't able to get it done. Well, Chris Hayden again has made three television appearances, albeit in amateur events. And he told me last night he's not afraid of the television cameras and the lights. He's just out here enjoying both. Well, he may say he's not afraid, but you've got to be a little nervous in your first national telecast. I know I was. And there you see Tom Baker once again in the driver's seat. Three over Chris Hayden and ten over Parker Bowen the third. Very important for Parker to strike in the ninth frame to set himself up for the ten. Eighteenth millionaire was Tom Baker with his win in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania.
There's a look at Parker Ball in the third in the ninth frame on lane 40. Notes the importance of this shot and reacts accordingly. Say chant Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. Will it hold? No. Ooh. It looked as if that ball was just down a little early, Gary. And that results in the ball hooking high. As you can see, through the heart, leaving the 3-6-10 and really taking a big advantage away from Tom Baker. Now, Parker Bone actually can strike out and shut out Baker. And Baker does convert to spare, 3-6-10, in the ninth frame. But that might have been a costly mistake for Baker. Well, as we take a look at the scoreboard right now, Chris Hayden and Tom Baker can shoot 235 if they strike out. If Parker Bowen the third strikes out, even though he's down by seven pins right now, he can shoot 238. So that's the way it stands going into our 10th frame. And if we're tied, there will be a one ball roll-off, Marshall. That's the rules here for the PBA. And certainly a possibility of a tie as Chris Hayden leaves a little bit of a wobbly nine pin. We'll take a look. Ball comes in light. Didn't get enough of the three pin. Pins scatter around, but not to be in a little bit of disappointment by Chris. Needs to regroup himself, make this spare. He can still shoot 224, and that very well may win this match. Oh, my goodness. Well, and he knows it. He knows it. Call it inexperience, or call it just a poor shot at a bad time. But that should pretty well take him out of the running for winning this match. We take a look at the reaction. He, he's probably made that 500 times in a row. And to miss it at such an opportune time is uh, just an extraordinarily costly error. And even though he said that he wasn't nervous being on television, maybe that was a sign that he was. But he'll be the only one to know that. Strikes in the 10th frame, and Chris Hayden, you will not be bowling in our title match, but Tom Baker, you still have a chance. In the 10th frame, it comes down to Parker Bone the third and Tom Baker. And as you said, Marshall, you can shut him out. Well, he can. If he strikes here in his second ball in the 10th and then fills eight, Tom Baker will have to be satisfied with just making it to our shootout round. He will not continue on to bull Doug Kent. But that's yet to happen. Parker has he controls his own fate right here. Looks like the Parker ball the shot 300 last week, doesn't it, Gary? Yes, it does. And a look of concern on the face of Tom Baker. We'll take one more look at Parker Bowen the third. He knows how much this shot is going to mean. Gets the strike. Big shot now. Let's concentrate, Parker. You need eight pins. Don't have a mental letdown now. And there's your winner, Gary. And he has done it. Mr. Consistency in 1998 having another great year. Parker Bone the third will move on to our championship round. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to the Greater Detroit Open. A look at our score, and you see Parker Bone the third closing it out, 238, 223 to 213. Now, if either Doug Kent or Parker Bone the third rolls a 300 game in the championship match, you'll receive a one million dollar bonus, courtesy of the Showboat Hotel, Casino, and Bowling Center in Las Vegas. Well, in addition to our top four seeds today, 20 other bowlers rounded out the field of 24 finalists. Fifth place, Johnny Petraglia just missed making the telecast. We'll see Johnny at his place next week in the Brunswick Johnny Petraglia Open in New Jersey. 12th place, Amleto Monticelli, 1992 Greater Detroit Open champ, only international player inducted into the PBA Hall of Fame. 14th place, John Mazza, the Michigan resident, made a hard charge last night but couldn't quite crack the top 10. 19th place, Eric Forkel, hungry for another chance at a title, finished second two weeks ago at the Tucson Open. And 23rd place to the colorful Dale Eagle, who had a frustrating match play round but did manage to roll the only 300 game of the evening. And here is Doug Kent, the top seed warming up. Well, today we've got tips on grips and comfort is the key. For more, here's Marshall Holman with our tip of the week.
While it's unlikely that any two bowlers will have exactly the same grip, there are three general categories that grips fall into. There's the conventional, the semi-finger, and the fingertip grip. The conventional grip is generally used when you first start bowling and preferred by new or recreational bowlers. Most of your finger is in the ball, yielding more control and a more secure grip overall. The semi-fingertip and the fingertip grips are used by the more serious bowler. Bowlers looking for added performance and more impact on the ball will rely on these grips. They allow you to have more power and control over the ball with less of your finger in the hole. The most important concept to keep in mind when determining your grip is to choose what's most comfortable for you and your game. If you're just starting out, go with the conventional. But if you feel you're ready to put more power into your game, then go with the semi-fingertip or the fingertip grip. Well, two bowlers looking to grip that first place prize of $16,000. We will be back with our championship match between Doug Ken and Parker Bone the third after this message and a word from your local station. And there you see our two bowlers in our championship match. There is Doug Kent. Right-hander. 31 years old. From the land of many lakes, Canandaigua, New York. Beautiful part of the country. And we'll take a look at Doug Kent. What a great style. Powerful bowler. Has a lot of ways of getting the job done. He gets it done with a little bit of good fortune the first frame. And that's $1,000 to the PBA Tour Founder Foundation, courtesy of Budweiser. Parker Bone third, second consecutive championship appearance. We mentioned earlier he has been tremendously consistent this year. And of course, in the final of the American Bowling Congress Masters last week. than last week. <laughs> Solid seven pin for Parker Bone. We'll take a look. Watch the four pin. It wraps around. That's the second one to the left. Wraps around the bottom of it and it, he knows he made a good shot but uh, he comes back and he makes another seven pin. Boys, two in a row, Parks. Follow all your favorite sports and get updated scores and stats on the net. CBS Sports Live has exclusive columns and video highlights, plus interviews, chats, and more. Go to cbs.sportsline.com. And here's Parker Bowen the third, lane 39. As a matter of fact, Marshall, he finds himself down early, working on a spin. Doug Kent does not strike in the next game. If he spares, they'll be dead even. You know, Parker wanted to say hi to his boys. Parker, the fourth, and Evan, so uh, Daddy says hi. And he'll be back in New Jersey soon. He's coming home, boys. Now, you told me that Doug Kent changed his grip this week. What did he do? Well, he went to a little longer grip that enabled him to not squeeze the ball and make a more fluid release. It certainly paid dividends. Leaves the four pin, but... Not a bad shot. Let me take a look at Doug. You can see the way his hand is stretched out pretty good in that ball. So Doug Kent, second shot in the second frame and does convert to spare. And he did switch balls to shoot at that four pin. He goes with a harder ball that goes very, very straight. All you need is accuracy when you're shooting spares. Well, very much like Mike Albee, who won the American Bowling Congress Masters last week, Doug Kent is a collector of sports cards, and he also likes to tinker around with autos, which I don't. <laughs> Doug splatters him around in the third frame. Match remains all even, Gary. Doug Kent, winner of this event two years ago, 1996. So he's familiar with this particular bowling center, and he's comfortable. And right now, I know Parker Bowling III is thinking, I've had way too many second-place finishes the last few weeks. It is time to win. Try and get it done here early against Doug Kent. 
and that's exactly what he's trying to do. Because the power strike takes that 10-pin lead. Ball's good off his hand. Will it carry? That's a yes. Well, flock of them over there. Parker referring to the flock of posters and banners over to the left, mm -hmm. showing his name. A lot of support for this very, very likable man from New Jersey. That's three in a row for Parker Bow. Yeah, he is on lead. target. Yes, he is. Good shot, just please come on, 7-pin, fall down for me. He said right before the broadcast he wanted to see you down there on the approach after this was all over. Yeah, he wants me to present him with his, with his money, I think. That's what he had in mind. Here's Doug Kent, lane 40. And a little bit of an answer from Doug Kent. I look at the scoreboard right now, and Doug Kent down by 10. And don't forget, this is the fifth frame. Either one of our bowlers strikes, it means $1,000 to the PBA Tour Foundation, courtesy of Budweiser. And Marshall, that is $1,000 for the PBA Tour Foundation, courtesy of Budweiser. And thank you very much to Doug Kent. Doug Kent evening the matchup right now with his, his third strike in a row. Parker Bowl working on three strikes in a row. Would like to get his fourth here in the fifth frame and take a 10-pin advantage once again. Yeah, double dip. dip. I'm sorry, Marshall, double dip for Doug Kent, uh, picking up $1,000 for the PBA Tour Foundation and uh, also hopefully contributing to his own charity there, his own personal charity. <laughs> You've got that right. Hard. And that's another $1,000 for the PBA Tour Foundation, courtesy of Budweiser, and this time from the hand of Parker Bone III. And it really looked as if this ball was a little bit to the right of, of Parker Bone's target, but the ball held the pocket, and he struck. Yeah, those guys are working hard out there. Doug Kent uh, taking off the glasses. Uh, Wiping down a bit, you can see a little sweat on the brow of Parker Bone the third. He looks a little bit uh, drier than Doug, but nonetheless, he's, uh, he's working up a good sweat as well. Parker's a little bit lighter than Doug. But maybe not much lighter in the wall the way he's been throwing that ball the last month. Well, Parker Bone the third is on target. Up by 20 over Doug Kent. And we are back to bowling action in the sixth frame. Doug Kent. Working on a couple of strikes, but he finds himself down by 20 over Parker Bowen the third, and he's up on lane 40. To take that 20-pin deficit to a 10 with a strike here. Come on. He shakes him around and gets the friendly roll of the 7-pin. Cuts that deficit in half. We'll take a look at the strong Doug Kent. Really lost the ball quite a ways out of the lane. Gets the friendly roll of the 7th hit. Thank you very much. Now let's just throw one more and tie Parker once again. Doug Kent, he's got a few idols in this game. Guys like Mark Roth and Earl Anthony. Uh, one other guy, uh, Marshall Holman he mentioned, is uh, another huge influence uh, on his bowling career. Uh, don't know the man. <laughs> oh my gosh, we got a... What was that? He crumbled the bucket. My gosh, look at this. Watch as we see the head pin go light. There's the five pin going into the four. Who knows what hit the two pin. And right now, Doug Kent, he doesn't care. He's just happy to have it. He can't believe it. I know his son Jacob will be very happy to see Dad get that strike. Jacob had, a, had an accident this morning. He was uh, on a four-wheeler, and uh, he was injured a little bit, but... I understand he's going to be just fine, and uh, Danny's thinking about you right now. Well, we all wish him well. And Parker answering back himself. Take a look at the seven pin. It just barely falls over. Just, just gets nudged by the four. Come on. A five in a row for Doug Kent. Six in a row for Parker Bone as he takes a 10-pin lead once again, Gary. 
So now Parker Bowen the third up on lane 39, and he has been quite strong to the last seven, six, seven frames. And he wasn't rattled by that lucky shot by Doug Kent as he throws yet another one on oh, lane sure 39. Rattled. And he rattled the pins there, Marshall. Yeah, he just stuffed them down. That's Parker Bowen the best. And you know he's fired up because he has a very, very busy week coming up as we move to North Brunswick, New Jersey, and Johnny Petraglia's Brunswick Open. It's, and Parker is heavily involved in that with Johnny Petraglia. He's got a very busy week. He's got seven bowlers staying in his home right now. <laughs> That's a mouthful of feed. Uh-oh. Ball just a little bit high, Gary. Did not get the break that time. This shot was just left off his hand. It comes in a little high in the pocket, and it leaves a solid four. Nosey threw it pretty good, but pitched it just a little bit, Doug. And he knows that can really open the door for Parker Bow the third. As Doug Kent converts the spare, but now finds himself down by 21 pins heading into the ninth frame. And Parker starting out with a spare and throwing nothing but strikes since, has a possible 290. Doug Kent with strikes in the ninth, 10th, and 11th and 12th would shoot 259. And desperately needing this strike right here. And Doug Kent, uh, Marshall violated the, uh, the uh, shot clock on that uh, last ball of his. It was $500. Uh, he's not going to worry about that right now. He threw the strike he needed in the ninth frame. The $100 fine is basically meaningless, but uh, if he were to do that again, it would become a $1,000 fine, and, and that would put the hurt on him. How about you? Did you ever receive any fines from the PBA? Uh, never for going slow, but for basically everything else I did. Thanks for bringing that up. Okay. Appreciate it, Gary. All right, so Parker Ball the third, looking to take this tournament, and then he gets the great break, tripping out not only the 6'10", but the eight as well. We'll take a look as this ball goes into the pocket a little bit high off, off Parker Bone. The thing that saves him is his great speed control. Throws the ball hard, a little bit high. Look at the way the pins just trip him out. Help me. You got it. And right now for Parker Bone, any kind of a mark. And he's the winner. And it's no more second place finishes for a while for Parker Bowen the third. After leading all week, Doug Kent can only sit and watch. There you go. And that has done it. That has done it, Marshall. As you pointed out, no more second finishes. And Parker knows how fortunate he really is. Another shot he throws a little bit high. All Doug Kent can do is sort of smile and say, all right, I'll be back again. We'll take a look at the ball coming a little high into the pocket. Six pin is tripped out. Well, Gary, with Parker shooting 300 last week, and now a chance for 290, there's his biggest fan, Josh oh, Hyde. He's loving it. And it will be a pleasant trip home to New Jersey for Parker Bowen III. He won the first tournament of the year, 1998, the Brentwood Classic. A couple of seconds after that, back in the winner's circle today. 290 for Parker Bowen III, and what a great talent. Getting it done here in Taylor, Michigan. Come on, bud. Doug Kent will finish out his game as Parker Bowen the third and receives welcome applause. Congratulations from the crowd on hand here in Taylor. And a hug from his girlfriend, Leslie Beamish. <laughs> <laughs> Parker Bowen, if it wasn't for that first frame, could it have been a million dollar winner? Well, you'll never know. Three hundred game for Parker Bowen the third last week in the shootout round of the American Bowling Congress Masters, missing by one frame today.
And Doug Kent closes it out with a 248. So Parker Bowen the third, 290 to 248, winning the Greater Detroit Open. We'll be back in just a moment.